Hello and welcome everyone, it's Mr. Umath again and today we want to have a look at the geometric series and resolve the Tortoise paradox. Okay, the Tortoise paradox is a very very old paradox in which a Tortoise is doing uh, in in the first step it's doing one meter then it goes down to one half meter and then the half of one half meter will get which gives you point to five meters and so forth so it's actually going ahead but always the half of the distance that it traveled before now we want to resolve this and the key is the geometric series and the Taylor series to that function or better uh, to the series <laughs> okay now Let's have a look at the geometric series. It's pretty easy. It's 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so forth. So you are adding all the powers of x and uh, you at this moment might be saying why is he writing down a power sum instead of going from the function to the power sum? Because sometimes it's pretty easy to use another approach instead of the differentiation approach that I uh, showed you in the first video uh, because um, the Taylor series has a very interesting uh, property if you find a Taylor series for a function then it's unique so it doesn't matter how you got this way uh, this result it's only important that it is the same as the normal approach would have given you and in this case it's pretty easy to go this way and um, that's the reason why I chose uh, to do it this way. Okay. Now let's have a look at the sum and try to understand it. But instead of going for the infinite sum, I will take the sum and end at x to the n, so that we have a finite sum. I will explain later on why this is very important. Now we have a finite sum s. We add one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus and so forth until x to the n. Now. If you're looking at the sum, it looks quite hard. Imagine you would have n equals 1000. It would take a lot of time to calculate it. Even a computer could uh, have a, a lot of trouble calculating it because there are a lot of summations, a lot of multiplications, and if you take some very, very hard uh, values, then it is. I know it's fast for a computer, but still it takes longer than the way we will learn here. Okay, now the trick to solve this problem is to multiply this whole equation with x. Now important, which is important, is that this x is not equal to 0. I hope that is clear. If this x is equal to 0, our function will have a value of 1 anyway. Okay, But let's assume x is not equal to 0 at this point and multiply this with s. Now what we do is we just get on the right hand side we get x because we multiplied 1 with the x then x with x gives you x squared x squared with x gives you x cubed x cubed multiplied with x gives you x to the 4 and the interesting part is the last one it's x to the n if we multiply with x we get x to the n plus 1 on the left hand side we just simply got the value of the sum multiplied with x okay now let's go ahead and comprehend what will happen later on if we are looking at these sums they look quite the same doesn't they okay don't they here you see x here you see x here you see x squared here you see x squared here you see x cubed and so forth and actually here in front of this x to the n plus one is a x to the n okay so if we would subtract both equations we could reduce these guys in the middle and we would be left with 1 minus x to the n plus 1. So let's do it. So we write it down, we get s minus x multiplied with s is equal to the first sum subtracted the second sum which is here. Okay. And now why is it important that the sum is finite okay because when working with infinite sums you have to be very careful in order to be able to rearrange this, these kind of um, equations and the key word for that is absolute convergence and actually if your sum is not absolutely convergent you are not allowed to rearrange this okay this is often done and this leads to quite messy results so whenever 
working with infinite sums be very very careful and instead of going for the infinite sum try to break it up into a finite sum and then uh, try to evaluate something with that uh, and then take the limit for uh, the sum for infinite terms okay now what we can do right now is we can just simplify this stuff okay as I told you this x and this minus x will cancel okay the first term the one will stay there because there is no one anywhere okay you cannot subtract um, one so it will be left here the x will be subtracted here x squared will be subtracted by this x squared this x cubed will be subtracted by x cubed so they are all cancelling this x to the n will be cancelled by the x to the n that is standing in front of this guy and the last term that we subtract is x to the n plus 1 but there is no term to cancel so we are left with minus x to the n plus 1 okay now we can go ahead and um, factor out s on the left hand side here and we get this result and now it's pretty easy because we are actually not looking for anything else than s we have to divide with 1 um, minus x. Now it's pretty important for you to understand that we are not allowed to plug in 1 for a value. Okay, You are not allowed to plug in 1. Why? Because we would have a 0 value here. So let's just divide this Okay, and uh, assume that x is not equal to 0 and x is not equal to 1. Okay this is the only thing that we assumed here now but we were actually not interested in the finite sum but in the infinite sum so let's take the limit for n going to infinitely large values but you know if you have some number to a infinitely large power it is very important that the magnitude of this x is smaller than one okay imagine you would have two and you would have two uh, to the thousand for example this is a pretty large number but if you have one over two and you take this uh, to a power of thousand for example then you have one over two to the thousand and that gives you one over some very very large number and this will have a value of zero so it is quite important for us to say that if the magnitude of this x is smaller than one okay anyways we told that x is not allowed to be equal to 1 we said that this should be the magnitude of this guy should be e, uh, smaller than 1 and then we can just leave this away because this will go to 0 if we take the limit this will uh, disappear we get 1 over 1 minus x okay and then actually I forgot here to add the infinity uh, here the plus point 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 you have to add them infinitely many terms here and then you have this function 1 over 1 minus x and we will do a lot of funny stuff that, with this function and uh, before I continue it's very important for you to remember that I told you here in this step when multiplying with x that x is not equal to 0 now we can think about it again and say okay if we plugged in x equals to 0 in here or in here you will always get 1 okay now let's look at our formula if we plug in equal um, x equals 0 then we get 1 over 1 minus 0 it's 1 okay so actually we can um, go back and say okay never mind even if we multiply with x not uh, saying that we multiply with x but this formula this kind of expression holds is valid for even this value of x equals zero so this is the reason why I took here the absolute value of um, x smaller than one now let's have a look at the paradox that I was talking before okay let's imagine you have a tortoise and actually um, you can imagine this as a race so imagine there is some um, someone running in front of you and you are trying to catch up with him but uh, you are only catching up with half the distance between him and you okay for example if you have one meter or let's say we start off with two meters distance okay you have two meters distance between your um, opponent then uh, the distance that you travel in the first step imagine you are running with uh, large steps is one meter okay 
let's write that down okay in the first step we do one meter now in the second step we are doing the half of the step that we did before so this would be one half and we add this one meter plus one half okay now in the next step we are taking the half of one half which will give you one over four or one over two squared okay now imagine we do a further step and then we have a fourth and we are doing the half of one fourth which will give you one over eight or one over two to the three okay now you can imagine we are doing this all the way along okay you're running as a crazy guy after this uh, opponent and you're trying to catch up with him now the question is will you ever reach this guy and the result is pretty easy you will never reach this guy because what we found out now was if you look at this this is nothing else than the geometric series imagine one half would be your x then this is x this is x squared this is x cubed and so forth and we know that if you have the geometric sum then this is equal to one over one minus one half if you go ahead and um, simplify this a little bit then you see it's two okay what does this mean we had a distance of two between us and the op opponent and we tried to catch up with him but only in in the infinite case we will reach it two okay we will never surpass two and this is the interesting part actually we are adding we are uh, we are adding steps and steps and steps but we will never reach above the the magical value of two and this is the interesting thing about this series um, there are a lot of series where you add stuff to it and they will have a finite value for example the geometric series you can think of other series as well there are also series that are adding up something which gets smaller by every addition but still the sum is diverging and very very famous example is the divergent harmonic series it's actually adding up all the reciprocal values of um, all natural numbers for example 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 and so forth if you would add up this sum you would have an infinite sum okay this is uh, many people would think that this is more intuitive than this and I hope this cleared out some stuff for you and yeah that's it if you like my videos please give thumbs up if you have any questions feel free to ask and um, like always I hope to see you soon on my videos there are many many new videos coming on the Taylor series uh, with lots of funny um, and interesting applications so see you guys and have a nice day